Um, well, Shanti, let me ask you, you talked a bit about the difference between video and face-to-face. -face. Um, what about telephone? I mean, we've had some reports that the take-up of video consultations is sometimes mixed uh, compared to phone. When, when do you need video and when will phone suffice? Yeah, that's interesting. So a lot of us have been doing a lot of telephone consultations, I think, across the NHS. Uh, and we will certainly do, continue to do a lot. Uh, we put this to a focus group as part of the vocal work. And there were a couple of really interesting things. So patients said that when they spoke to you on the telephone, they thought you were doing other things and they didn't have your undivided attention, which I think is probably true sometimes. Um, when, so they like the fact that when you do, and what they said is when you're talking to them on a video, because the webcam is in front and all the data is on the screen, you're constantly establishing eye contact with them, which they didn't get at the end of the telephone. And for us, I think as clinicians, a lot of us like these visual clues that you don't get at the end of the telephone. And I, I do like seeing people. And sometimes, you know, you, you pick up signs and you pick up things. We've been doing new patient appointments during COVID using video, which is something that I always said we wouldn't do because patients said you needed pre-existing relationship with them before you started doing video. Uh, and I always thought, you, you know, your first appointment had to be face to face, particularly because you can't examine. But we've been using video and in terms of video versus telephone for these appointments, for the first appointments, it is sometimes you, it's very difficult asking people what their weight is. And I, I on the telephone, if I'm doing a new appointment, it's very, very tricky asking people you know, what their weight might be and have they gained weight and things like that. But you get these visual clues when you're seeing someone. Ethnicity, you know, if I'm doing it on the telephone, I have to ask in a very, very insensitive manner what their ethnic origin is. So there are visual clues that you get on a video which you don't get on the telephone. Um, it also depends on what you're using it for, I guess. So, you know, if, you're, if it's a very quick call to tell someone their blood tests are fine and nothing more needs to be done, you're probably all right doing it on a telephone. But if you want to have a longer conversation and you, you really need, it's a, you know, it's a protracted conversation and so on, it's far better, I think, done video. There are other silly things. You know, when I talk to my patients and they say to me, having a video consultation is like inviting you home. You get a degree of personal engagement, you get a relationship with them, and then you pick up things in the background which gives you a feel for the kind of lives they lead. And then all the advice that you offer is put in perspective then. So there are advantages, uh, but it all depends, I guess, what you're using it for. Uh, and that's the, the, that's the whole thing about keeping it as part of a whole pathway and the flexibility, I guess. Thanks, Shanti.